Hello and welcome to Dub Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be exploring air pollution. Air pollution can occur almost anywhere. It occurs when the environment is contaminated by any chemical, physical, or biological agent that will modify the natural characteristics of the atmosphere. Some common sources of air pollution would be stoves in the home, motor vehicles, industrial facilities, or forest fires. Air pollution can lead to a lot of different health problems like cancer, asthma, emphysema, or even death. In the United States, the EPA estimates that the annual death rates related to both indoor and outdoor air pollution range from between 150,000 to 350,000 individuals. Air pollution can also cause economic damage as it weakens and damages structures. Air pollution can also increase climate change. One of the places we might encounter air pollution is actually inside of our homes. In fact, health risks are actually increased in developed countries because people spend so much time inside. Levels of major pollutants can be concentrated to two to five times higher inside the average American home or commercial building than outside. Pollution levels inside of a car in an urban area can be 18 times higher than that if you were standing outside of that car. In fact, the EPA placed indoor air pollution at the top of the list of major cancer risk. The four most dangerous indoor air pollutants would be like tobacco smoke, formaldehyde, radon-222, and small and ultra-fine particulate matter. Of these, you might wonder, where would I find formaldehyde in my home? Isn't that a preservative for dead bodies? Well, formaldehyde is actually found in a lot of new fabrics that we find in uh, furniture and carpeting, as well as manufactured wood products. Various states have different uh, limitations on how much formaldehyde can be found in these products, with California probably having the most stringent standards. Where formaldehyde probably came to the forefront of national news was after the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. FEMA brought in trailers, uh, many of which had high concentration of formaldehyde, uh, which led to headaches and nausea in the inhabitants. Uh, those individuals were given uh, alternative housing, and the FEMA trailers were then uh, warehoused off-site, and eventually they were auctioned off. Now, traditionally, where we think we're going to encounter air pollution, obviously, is outdoors uh, or ambient air pollution. Industries, households, cars, and trucks will emit a complex mixture of air pollutants, many of which are harmful to our health. This outdoor air quality is also affected by pollen from plants, crops, and weeds. Fortunately, in the United States, we do have an AQI, or the Air Quality Index, which is a system that's used to warn the public when air pollution is dangerous. Other countries, like China, perhaps aren't as fortunate. There are many major air pollutants uh, that we will encounter, so um, let's briefly take a look at some of them. The first class of major outdoor air pollutants is going to be carbon oxides. Uh, there are two, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide is actually a toxic gas that forms during the incomplete combustion of carbon-containing uh, fossil fuels and organic compounds. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, is just a, a natural chemical that's present in the atmosphere that forms a result of natural processes. This is also enhanced by the burning of fossil fuels and the clearing of forests. In late 2009, the EPA actually declared carbon dioxide a danger to human health and it's going to be regulated under the Clean Air Act. Carbon oxides actually contribute to smog formation and they act as a greenhouse gas to influence climate change. Nitrogen oxides is another uh, major class of pollutants that are generally uh, referred to using the general formula NO to the subscript X. Nitrogen oxides form when nitrogen and oxygen gas in the air react under the high combustion temperatures in automobile engines and coal-burning power plants. Nitrogen oxides also can form from lightning and certain soil bacteria. Uh, nitrogen oxides react with air to form uh, nitrites, which react with water vapor in the air to form nitric acid and nitrate salts, which are going to be components of acid deposition. Another major class are going to be our sulfur dioxides. 
About one-third of the sulfur dioxides in the troposphere actually come naturally through the sulfur cycle as a result of uh, anaerobic decomposition or volcanic action. Two-thirds come from human sources, mostly combustion of sulfur-containing coal uh, from uh, oil refining and the smelting of sulfide ores. Sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere can actually be converted into sulfur, sulfuric acid and sulfate salts that will return to the earth as acid deposition. This can lead to the corrosion of metals, the damaging of structures, and can uh, contribute to various breathing problems. Another major class of air pollutants, and probably the most dangerous in terms of our health immediately, is suspended particulate matter. These are a variety of solid particles and liquid droplets that are small and light enough to actually remain suspended in the air. About 38% of these can come from human sources, uh, like plowing fields or from road construction that allows for these dust particles to get up into the atmosphere, uh, tobacco smoke, coal burning power plants, and vehicles. Now these small particles can irritate the nose and throat, damaging the lungs, aggravating asthma and bronchitis, and can actually lead into a shortened life as uh, things like uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease form. Some of these uh, suspended particles are actually toxic, things like lead and cadmium, which can cause mutations in our cells, leading to cancer and other reproductive problems. Ground level ozone or tropospheric ozone is another major air pollutant. It's a colorless and highly reactive gas that's a major component of photochemical smog. Ground level ozone can actually cause respiratory problems. It can aggravate heart disease, damage plants, damage rubber and tires, and can discolor and weaken fabric and paints. Another major class of air pollutants are VOCs or volatile organic compounds. These are organic compounds that exist in the atmosphere um, as a gas. Now most of these are going to be hydrocarbons like methane. About two-thirds of the global of VOC emissions will come from human sources like uh, rice paddies, landfills, oil and natural gas wells, and from cows. The most harmful of these VOCs are industrial solvents like benzene, vinyl chloride, or trichloroethane. VOCs are also greenhouse gases, many of which have been linked to leukemia, blood disorders, immune system damage, and death um, in acute exposure cases. Many of our modern uh, paints and solvents are trying to eliminate these harmful VOCs. So when you're getting your next uh, gallon of paint, ideally it should be VOC free. Finally, our last major group of uh, pollutants that we'll look at is radon. Now radon is really only an indoor air pollutant. Uh, it's a radioactive gas that's actually found in some soils and rocks. It occurs naturally as uh, a daughter product that comes from the decay of uranium or thorium in the soil. Now in areas where we are rich in uranium or thorium and we produce a lot of radon, this can actually get inside of the home and uh, through cracks and things in the basements and increase the risk of things like lung cancer. In areas where radon risk is highest, radon detectors and radon remediation systems are required. When a pollutant is emitted directly into the air, it's going to be classified as a primary air pollutant. Once those primary pollutants react together with each other or with water vapor, they form what we'll call secondary pollutants. One common secondary pollutant would be industrial smog or gray smog. Industrial smog is a mixture of sulfur dioxide droplets uh, and suspended solid particles that might come from unburned carbon or soot. When coal and oil are burned, the sulfur compounds they contain will react with the oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide gas. This is then converted to suspended droplets of sulfuric acid. Some of these droplets will react with ammonia in the atmosphere to form solid particles of ammonium sulfate. And this is what gives that particular smog its gray color. 
Now, fortunately, this is not as much of a problem in developed countries because most of our factories and coal burning plants have major pollution control mechanisms, but it's still a major problem in developing countries. China, in particular, some of the highest levels of industrial smog uh, due to having coal as a major power source. It has 16 out of 20 of the world's most polluted cities. On many days out of the year, uh, visibility is knocked down to less than 20 feet, and airplanes um, are actually grounded as a result of the dense smog that forms. You can actually see a massive brown cloud from outer space that covers much of China and India. In areas uh, beneath the cloud, photosynthesis is actually reduced, um, and this is going to interfere with crop development. The fine particles and droplets uh, act as uh, condensation nuclei for the formation of clouds, and this can actually perhaps be uh, modifying local climates. In fact, some scientists believe that uh, this massive brown cloud might have been uh, what has contribu contributed to major floods which took place in 2002 and 2005. Another secondary air pollutant would be photochemical smog or yellow smog. Photochemical smog is a mixture of ozone and other air pollutants that are formed by the reaction of nitrogen oxides and volatile organic hydrocarbons under the influence of light. We find photochemical smog in large cities where there's a lot of automobiles producing those nitrous oxides. One thing that can actually exacerbate the problem of air pollution is when a thermal inversion takes place. This will occur when a layer of warm air will settle over a layer of cooler air that lies near the ground. This will actually trap pollutants close to the ground. Normally, um, warm air is going to rise and it's going to take those pollutants with it and allow it to move with the wind. When a thermal inversion takes, inversion takes place, uh, the pollutants are trapped near the ground and as new pollutants are produced, we get an increasing concentration of pollutants. This took place in 1948 in Denora, Pennsylvania. It got so bad that 20 people died and 6,000 people became sick. Now the town had a sulfuric acid plant, a zinc plant, and a steel mill. And all that pollution was trapped due to a thermal inversion. A thermal inversion actually occurred in London in 1952 and it lasted for seven days. It was blamed for more than 12,000 deaths as a result of respiratory illness. Now, there are many ways to deal with air pollution. In the United States, we've established a major law called the Clean Air Act, which has greatly reduced outdoor air pollution from the six major air pollutants. The way this works is that it established national ambient air quality standards for the pollutants, uh, setting minimum standards for uh, how much can be present in the atmosphere. It also established emission standards for any hazardous air pollutants that might cause serious health or ecological effects. It also requires that any factories, power plants, or mines uh, to uh, produce a toxic release inventory so that communities can be informed on how much toxic material might be being put into their nearby atmosphere. Another way to deal with air pollution is to do something called cap-and-trade or emissions trading. Um, you establish an emissions cap uh, a maximum amount of pollution that can be produced. Now some companies um, might actually produce less pollution and they're going to be allowed to then to sell uh, credits for pollution to more polluting con companies. This way that the average pollution that's being produced meets that emission cap. In order for this to work we have to then as move forward reduce the size of that cap so that everyone is encouraged to uh, minimize the pollution that they produce. Additionally, uh, we can uh, use scrubbers on smokestacks to remove air pollutants. Uh, we can improve our overall energy efficiency so we don't have to burn as much carbon containing fuels. Um, we can use uh, non-polluting sources like solar or wind. Or we can uh, try to use alternative things like electric cars to reduce our uh, dispersed air pollution. Um, and this really would be helpful if we're using things like nuclear or alternative energy sources because then we're really uh, eliminating pollution from both the electricity production as well as the car itself.
Breathable air is a precious commodity that we need to conserve. Uh, here we have Chinese residents lining up to simply breathe fresh mountain air out of bags. Uh, because their air is so polluted, this is one chance for them to breathe crisp, clean air. Um, this is not a future that we want for uh, our children or children around the world. So it's incumbent upon us to continue to maintain our stringent clean air standards and to encourage other parts of the world to do the same um, so that not only can we be sustainable, but the world can be sustainable and we can maintain clean, breathable air for everyone.